Hello, beautiful minds, beautiful souls. Get ready for what is about to unfold as we look deep and reflect on the old and become wiser and start to feel whole. This podcast is for those who are tired of feeding their brains BS and is ready to unlock the BT. Beautiful thinking, that is. I'm your host, Le Anoya, and today we are going to be talking about trusting yourself. This is the first visual episode i don't like doing visual episodes because i'm just like in my room chilling but i feel like this message needs to be heard through face to face where you can see me and i don't know feel my energy because this one guys this one is like the craziest one ever and it's like so simple yet something we don't do today we're going to be talking about trusting yourself i feel like i've had such a journey with the trust I had in myself and it's crazy how it evolved over time and how it's been tested throughout the years when we think of like self-trust we think oh yeah I trust myself like I can know I'm gonna pull through this or I know I got myself and stuff like that but it's actually much more complicated than just the simple oh yeah I trust myself like we say it but do we do that through our actions and when we are actually tested are we actually showing up for ourselves or are we abandoning ourselves the minute it turns bad i wanted to talk about this topic was because i was recently tested on the trust i had for myself and who i am at my core at my soul i recently over the weekend went through a really bad mental breakdown with a bunch of paranoia I don't like talking about it because it was really triggering for me, but I think it's important to share this because I want you guys to recognize that no one's life is perfect and including my own and everyone has different journeys. And if I can share what I was going through, maybe that can help you. What happened is I had a bunch of anxiety, paranoia. I was like, oh my God, am I here? Am I real? Like I started dissociating, depersonalizing. I was texting my therapist like crazy. The next day, I was talking to like a psychiatrist and I was talking to trusted adults like my parents and my sister, who's also becoming a family marriage therapist. And it was really stressful to go through all that. And after the kind of episode went down and I wasn't, I was more chill, like I wasn't feeling the physical effects of dissociation. I still had that paranoia that would get back to that state. And it was really scary. And even now, I'm still experiencing this kind of like, anxiety or stress like what if i'm not going to be okay what if everything goes wrong and you lose your reality and you have to go to a mental hospital and all of this like it's it's very much there and present and even though there's not a physical stress being out there my brain's still trying to kind of prepare for it and how i'm kind of moving beyond this and i think it's so imperative that i tell you guys this now while i'm actually actively getting through this and in the process is i'm learning to trust myself I could say I trust myself in the past and be like, yeah, I trust myself. I love myself, da, da, da. But in this moment, I was tested. The one thing that my anxiety is from, like the one thing my anxiety has on me is control. Like I need to have control of my life. If I feel like I don't have control of my life, it stresses me out like crazy. I'm like, it's not cute, okay? And that's the one thing that like is my biggest fear almost. And that was 100% triggered. Like, I did not have control when that moment, uh, that breakdown happened to me. I felt like I couldn't trust myself. And it was just, it was horrible. It was one of the scariest moments that happened in my life lately because I, I've been feeling really good. And for all of this to happen, it's like, what the heck is happening? And my whole reality got kind of flipped upside down. And it got me to a point where I was like, how am I not showing up for myself? Like, why when something bad happened and tested that trust I had for myself, I immediately flipped on myself. I was like, no, I can't trust you anymore. And then that's when the anxiety started to breed and feed off that fear. And it's like, what? Like, like, bro, calm. it's not even like, it's so invalidating to just say calm down or just ignore it. I couldn't ignore that fear anymore. I had to start testing that fear I had. And it kind of started with me being like okay let's say you go through this and you're gonna be okay like I had to constantly reassure myself that I am safe that 
nothing in my physical environment can make me feel safe except myself. Sa- security and safety is a feeling because if you look at my outside world, technically I was safe. Like I was in the house, I had trusted adults. Like my life, I've orchestrated so well that I have so many resources to go through. I have so many techniques to use, but I still didn't feel safe. And that's when I realized it was a feeling. I was telling myself a story that, no, you're not safe because of this situation that happened to you in the past. And it's like, girl, but I am safe. But I am safe. This fear kept going in my head and it just kept playing and playing again. And I'm like, why are you playing? It's because I didn't trust myself. This fear, this fear was always looking for another reason to be like, hey, Layla, you can't trust yourself. Did you just see something crazy? Are you creating this story in your head oh Layla why didn't you do this oh Layla you messed up on this now you can't trust yourself this fear which kind of you know like mad libs right how you have to add words into it and you have to add certain words for a certain topic and that was kind of this fear this fear is like mad libs right now so it's like oh was taking any scenario I did in my life any mistake anything that could potentially fit it so I'm like oh Layla you did this Oh, now you can't trust yourself because you did this. When in reality, it's like we make mistakes all the time. Change is going to happen. It's inevitable. And this fear was just trying to scare me. I wouldn't even say scare me. This fear was trying to protect me, but in a really unhealthy way. I had to recognize what this fear was doing. That was the first step. And so I recognized, I was like, hey, this is what it's doing. And now I had to say why it was doing this. And I came to the conclusion that it was just trying to protect me. I couldn't demonize this fear at the same time either. Because it was like, if I were to hate on this fear, it would just create a cycle. And hate causes more hate. It's not going to get through anything if I keep hating on it. So I had to accept the fear for who she was showing up with and be like, okay, what am I neglecting in myself right now? And then I looked back at my life and see how I came to this point. And I was like, yo, I have been neglecting myself so much. (laughs) Like literally, I stopped doing my dance classes this month. I stopped working out as much. I stopped having nature time. And I stopped meditating as long. I stopped journaling as much. Like I stopped drinking as much water. I've been eating really unhealthy. And I was like, It's crazy because I didn't notice it because I was like, oh, if I stop this, I'll be fine. I'll just start over again later. But then over time, I kept dropping these things that really mean a lot to me and really help me. And I just feel like, oh, no, I don't need this anymore. Oh, I don't need this anymore. And then let's say I only stop doing meditating or I stop journaling. Okay, that's one thing. But then if I keep doing that over days and weeks and months, it's good instead of being just one thing that's 20 things that help emotionally regulate me that I've dropped and I dropped those things because I was listening to this fear this fear was like yo Layla you have to put 100% of your focus in school and 100% of your focus on this you can't fail in these areas because if lord have mercy if you fail in these areas it's creating that story again you're gonna be worse off and you're gonna be homeless and all this other bad things and you won't feel safe but then I didn't realize that this fear was actually making me not feel safe and I was not feeling safe right now thinking about not feeling safe so in reality my anxiety was single-handedly making me not feel safe and that's because I was scared and the thing about anxiety is it feeds on fear like I have a fear of change and it really fed on that fear and When I started to experience a lot of change in my life, it was like, okay, anxiety. Because I thought of anxiety as like this control. Like if I was anxious and worrying about every single thing in my life, maybe I'll have more control. But the thing is, is that that false sense of control was just a false sense of security of my brain trying to protect me. It wasn't really helping me. And I recognized it. It's like, okay, my brain's trying to protect me. Maybe not in the best way, but now it was like, how can I actually make myself feel safe and secure? This is just what works for me. I had to start trusting myself. I had to first 
question those fears and challenge the fears that my anxiety was saying. So if my anxiety told me that, hey, Layla, you can't do this because you'll fail at this, I went ahead and I did it. Like, for example, I started doing my dance classes again. And at first I was like, Layla, no, you can't do your dance classes because what if you start dissociating and you dissociate out of reality and you go to a mental hospital and all of this? Like, I'm not even kidding. My brain was telling me this. And when Nobody knows the power of the mind and how the mind can literally create your reality and regulate all your emotions and your body. So it can li- it's literally control of everything. My anxiety was telling me this. And then you know what I did? I went to that dance class. Even though I was scared, I still went to it. And then I realized, wow, I actually don't feel that bad in my dance class. I feel really good. And then after I felt so elated and happy and I actually felt emotionally regulated and I wasn't dissociating and... I started feeling these happy emotions because I questioned that fear. And then I had to kind of switch the role I had on fear and be like, okay, my anxiety isn't here to tear me down. My anxiety is here to challenge me. I'm taking every time I have something anxious and I'm using it as an opportunity for me to grow, for me to trust in myself more. Because once I challenge that fear, now I can trust myself. Now I'm like, okay, now I can trust myself to go to this dance class. And now I can trust myself to drive. And now I can trust myself to do these things. Because now I'm challenging that fear. I'm going, despite that feeling of fear, I'm still doing it because I know in my heart, in my intuition, that is right. And then I'm, I'm still pursuing it and I'm still going for it. And now I trust myself maybe even more than I usually did. Now I feel like a more a more secure sense of myself because I challenged that fear. And I wouldn't have that security of myself if my anxiety didn't challenge it. So I had to also reframe my anxiety. I had to start living my life in a way that feeds my soul. Let's say you have like a bucket of water and you have all these plants and you have to water these plants. Well, I had a lot of responsibilities in my life, so I had to water a lot of plants. I realized for months or even just one month, I was watering so many plants that I forgot to add water to the bucket. And adding water to the bucket for me was doing my dance class, doing my exercise, eating healthy, meditating, going to nature because nature is so healing for me. So I had to start putting water in my bucket, even if it took time Like, let's say the process of adding water to your bucket takes time from you. It's an opportunity cost for you doing work or me doing schoolwork or me doing anything I need to do. I still had to do it. I didn't care if it took time for me doing schoolwork. I had to set out and make time to add water to my bucket. Because, okay, let's say I keep doing schoolwork and I have no more water. Girl, I have no more water in my, like, no more water that day. Like, now I can't really do anything. And now it's less effective and less productive for me to do schoolwork, drain myself out, and then get nothing else done. Instead of taking time to add water, and then I can get a little bit of schoolwork done, a little bit of work done, a little bit of this done. We think in our brain, if we try to do overexert ourselves in one area, overexert ourselves in whatever we're doing, that it's going to make us feel better because then we're going to be closer to our goals. When in reality, the whole goal is off of a feeling. Yes, I want to be a successful YouTuber, right? But I really just want that feeling of security that I get from being a successful YouTuber. I don't want, like if I got became a successful YouTuber, but then I was depressed and super anxious, then I wouldn't want to be a successful YouTuber. What I know is that if I was a successful YouTuber, like millions, three million followers, like I would feel happy because then I'd be sharing my ideas and messages and creative projects to the world. And people would be seeing that. And that would make me feel important. That would make me feel good. But The thing about our goals is we can also feel these emotions without actually having the goal right now. I can still feel good in my body and happy right now. It's all about the journey of it all. It's not just about working yourself dry to get to this, I guess, high reward goal, but it's not even going to feel good if you're work dry, you know, and I had to realize that I have to feel good now to feel good later. I can't work myself dry now and then be like, oh, I'm gonna feel good later. So I'm gonna just wait till later to feel good. No, I had to prioritize myself now. And it was so 
God had to give me this kind of wake up call because if I didn't have such a serious situation happen to me, then I wouldn't have listened. I would have kept working myself a lot, listening to that anxiety fear that's going to be running me high and dry. And then I would have nothing left of myself. But I have this wake up call and I still have everything that makes me me. Another thing I kind of learned from this wake up call or my emotional breakdown was that at my core, if you take away everything that I do for people, all the actions, all the things, all my achievements, all my goals, if you take away everything I have, who am I? Like, what am I to my core? I'm my principles. I'm my values. I'm my morality. That's who I am. I'm my soul. And I had to start loving that instead of what I do, my achievements, who I am to people, all these things that my fears can kind of latch onto and start terrorizing me for. This kind of wake-up call made me realize that even when I'm at my worst, I'm still a positive person who believes in the best, who believes in cup half full. Like, I remember when I was going through that breakdown, I was still telling myself affirmations like, I'm here, I'm okay, everything's going to be okay. And I still went to people who made me feel good because I was still very persistent in making myself feel good. I knew that at my core, even if I had nothing, that like at the end of the day, I got myself. Even if I didn't believe it, I was still getting my back, getting me to the resources who would help me and not me crying. (laughs) But that means a lot to me because that means I can trust myself even in the moments where it feels like I can't and I had nothing. And I'm very proud of myself for that. And I hope people are proud of themselves for doing that too. Because any kind of illness, whether invisible or not, is valid. And I realized also through this that we're all going through a lot of things. And you have to be there for yourself right now. You have to trust in your ability to take care of yourself. You got this. You got this. Now I feel like post breakdown I feel more aware of my body and even though I have this anxious thought I know at the end of the day it's working in my favor because it's going to get me to where I need to go the thing about my brain that it keeps forgetting every single time even though I try to remind her is that change is inevitable that I'm not going to feel a certain way forever whether good or bad trusting yourself is beyond what you do, maybe your actions, your achievements, and stuff like that. Trusting yourself is truly being there for yourself at your worst. When you think of relationships, they're like, oh, you know that they're one if they're with you at your worst. Nah, that's the same principle when you apply it to yourself. Like, you have to be there for yourself even when you're at your worst. And recognizing that there are things you can't control but you can control how you feel about a certain situation you can trust in a higher source i trust in god whatever that is for you do you boo and i had to also trust in myself i had to also stop listening to those questions like oh Layla, did you do this oh Layla, did you do this right no i did do it right okay and i'm not perfect and that's okay but i have to trust that whatever's happening to me is for me and I am safe, I'm here, I'm okay, because if I wasn't okay, and it's not the end of the world, whatever, because then I'll even be okay in those situations, because there's still so many resources that I can go to if I'm at my worst, like, I'm literally so grateful to be living in this day and age, because I know everyone's like, oh, this day and age sucks, blah, blah, blah. but if I think about 20 years ago, and all the struggles that I'm going through now, they would have sent me to the hospital, and left me out to you know die like we have so many resources now we're just not using it and our brains kind of like playing little games on us which is fine it's fine but i'm gonna alchemize my anxiety i'm gonna use my anxiety for the best because i do not want to feel like i have no control because i do have control just not in the ways that i think i do and it's like i'm not gonna let my anxiety put me down I'm going to let my anxiety help me overcome challenges so I can then trust in myself more, believe in myself more. And then when actual challenges come, so let's say I have a career challenge, like let's say I'm a film director and I have to deal with the struggle of, 
oh, maybe an actor doesn't want to act a certain way. I know how to get through that because I trust myself and my abilities to get through any situation. And this is purely conditioning. This is purely me going to the gym, my brain going to the gym. And I hope you guys got something from this. It did feel like a bit of a vent and it's very vulnerable, but I I love myself and I trust myself. And I hope you guys are sweet in the comments because recognize that we all are going through things big or small to ourselves or others and that the opinions of others don't really matter the opinion you have for yourself matters and whether you are going in your highest good or not i hope you guys got something from this i'm still gonna turn this into a podcast episode even though it is low-key not it is it is a podcast episode but it's a visual one i hope you guys got something from this okay guys I am done. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys are doing good. I'm trying my best to do good. I'm doing better now. I go to therapy once a week and I have so many practices and wonderful people in my life to help me. And I'm looking towards those resources because I have them and I'm grateful for them. And I love you guys so much because you guys have helped me share my passions and are a great source to share my creativity and you guys are so nice and sweet and i love you guys so much and you guys support me in my dreams that is all for today's episode take care my little annoyance bye